Welcome everybody to another video about MicroStrategy and Bitcoin. This one will cover the MicroStrategy Bitcoin flywheels of value. That's how I call them. It's the interaction between MicroStrategy and Bitcoin generating more and more value. The first flywheel is Bitcoin itself. So Bitcoin is the first ever finite asset which I estimate to have a total maximum supply of 15 million Bitcoin. Not 21 million, 15 million Bitcoin, because I estimate that 6 million Bitcoins have been lost forever and will not be recovered and will not be part of the total supply. So when you see calculations related to Bitcoin versus the total supply, Always keep that in mind that when calculations are done with 21 million, it's not the reality. They should be done with 15 or maximum 16 million Bitcoin. Because we have a finite asset, if we have increased in demand for Bitcoin, the laws of economics say that price needs to go up. If the demand is flat, but the supply goes down because people lose Bitcoin, the price can only go up. The only situation where the Bitcoin price goes down, if either the supply goes up, that's impossible, or the demand drops. And because the demand has not dropped since inception, actually it's going exponentially upwards, the demand does not stop. So in 2024, the demand is higher than any other year since the creation of Bitcoin. This is the first flywheel of value. Now, MicroStrategy. MicroStrategy has been accessing the bond market. That bond market, which is debt, has a market of 119 trillion US dollars worldwide and 46 trillion dollars in the US. So recently, MicroStrategy has been accessing that debt market by issuing bonds. And with that debt, they gather cash, they buy Bitcoin. And when they buy Bitcoin, they lower the supply of Bitcoin available for the next investor. Therefore, the price of Bitcoin goes up. Once they buy the Bitcoin, the Bitcoin is added to the market cap of MicroStrategy that increases the value of MicroStrategy and pushes the price up of the shares of MicroStrategy because the market cap automatically goes up. Also, when, if, in the future, MicroStrategy gets added to indices. These indices will also need to increase their position of MicroStrategy, and that brings buying pressure for MicroStrategy, and the price of the shares goes up. Flywheel number three is the issuance of equity at the market equity that recently has been done at premium. MicroSailor and team always try to issue equity always at a premium in order to capture that value and bring it back to the company. While issuing these shares, MicroStrategy brings back cash, cash that is going down in value over time, buys Bitcoin who is gaining value over time when it buys bitcoin again it removes bitcoin from the total supply therefore there's less and less bitcoin available for the next investor they bring this back to the company it adds to the market cap increases the value of the company and the shares eventually will go up yes there's a dilution it will eventually be captured in the market cap when issuing those share at a premium, we lower the impact of dilution of those share. Again, in this case, indices need to react and 
add to the position accordingly depending on the rules of the different indices to match the change in market cap of MicroStrategy. Flywheel number four. These are all the Bitcoin ETFs. They have been buying and accumulating Bitcoin at an alarming rate. I think now we're close to the 10th month since the approval or 11 months since the approval and they have or are very close to 1 million Bitcoin already as part of the ETFs. Well, if the ETFs continue to buy Bitcoin, they will remove Bitcoin from the total supply, forcing the price of Bitcoin to go up. But what's exactly the sequence of events for ETFs? Investors buy shares of the approved ETFs, could be IBIT or it could be others that have been approved. You buy the shares of the ETF in US dollars, then the ETF needs to, within 24 hours normally, go into the market and buy an equivalent amount of Bitcoin. Like I said, when they buy that Bitcoin, they need to keep that Bitcoin until the shares have been sold. And if the demand of the ETFs continue, and if the accumulation of Bitcoin continues, that will decrease the amount of available Bitcoin, and the demand for Bitcoin increases, then this demand will be applied to all the different flywheels that we have already covered. Flywheel number five, this is the IBIT option trading that just started this week, I believe, or the week before, on the IBIT ETF. So option market, it's a huge market in the US, and IBIT has been approved by the ECC to offer IBIT options to the market. So what happens when somebody buys options of IBIT, the market makers need to hedge that buying by buying the underlying asset, in this case is IBIT. In case the option owner demands the IBIT shares at the end of the process for the option owner. So when the market makers buy IBIT, they're buying actually the shares of IBIT. Then the ETF needs to buy Bitcoin in the equivalent amount of the shares of IBIT that were bought. That increases the demand for Bitcoin, removes Bitcoin from the total supply, and lowers the amount of Bitcoin available for the next investor. And this brings the, pr the, the price of Bitcoin higher and affects all the other flywheel. The option trading has only been approved for the IBIT ETF, but I expect that other ETFs will be approved in the future and this will increase the demand for options, the trading of options, the trading of IBIT and the other ETFs, and therefore increases the demand of this flywheel alone that will impact on all the other flywheels, especially flywheel number one, which we'll review at the end. So this one, this flywheel has not happened yet, but that's the future that we don't know when it's going to happen. Is it this year, next year, or in a couple of years? We don't know. It's still unknown. States and countries will buy Bitcoin for their country and keeping, keeping it as a store of value like gold was used before. For now, we have countries like El Salvador who have been buying one Bitcoin per day. We have Bhutan, who has decided that all the extra electricity that they have, they will assign it to mining Bitcoin and collect the rewards of bringing security to the network. And they will accumulate that Bitcoin and add it to the store of value of Bitcoin for Bhutan. Those are the two that I have heard. Uh, the US and China have Bitcoin as part of 
their balance sheet if you want, but that's only been seized Bitcoin. They have not really bought Bitcoin as a store of value asset per se. So who will be the first big country to buy Bitcoin? It could be the US or it could be any other country, but once one big country in the world that has impact economically does buy Bitcoin as a critical asset to be kept in their balance sheet as a store of value, then there's going to be a state and country race to buy Bitcoin. And this is one of the last flywheels that we have. We may have others, but those are the ones that I see. If countries start buying Bitcoin, countries have one little advantage that no other entity has is that they can issue money indefinitely. Yes, they will debase their own currency, but if they automatically switch it to buy Bitcoin, there's going to be an arbitrage there where you're taking an asset that is losing value and shifting it to an asset that is gaining value. And that will be major because many countries will be able to increase the value of Bitcoin in their balance sheet enough in order to pay back their debt because of the characteristics of Bitcoin, because it has returned over 50% in value since inception, and that could critically help countries with all the debt levels that they have, help their economy, help the status of the whole balance sheet, and this could be a very major flywheel. It has not started yet, but it could be extremely important. This flywheel will be extreme pressure for Bitcoin and therefore push the price up. Finally, this is the flywheel overview. So we have MicroStrategy issuing debt to accumulate more Bitcoin. MicroStrategy issuing shares, equity, to buy more Bitcoin. ETFs that have been buying constantly more and more Bitcoin. ETF options that now are starting to be available that indirectly forces ETF to buy more Bitcoin. And then the flywheel that is not technically activated yet, states and countries who will buy Bitcoin. And that augments and increases the demand for Bitcoin. And because Bitcoin is a finite asset, if the demand increases, the price will only go up. I hope you learned something. This is the whole setup of what I have detected as flywheels. There could be others there that I don't know yet. I will add them eventually, but this is something that everyone who is investing in Bitcoin and who is investing in MicroStrategy needs to learn. Many people believe that MicroStrategy is a Ponzi scheme. I don't think it is because of the flywheel characteristics that I just have covered that not only implicate MicroStrategy, they also implicate the ETFs and in a smaller scale, everyone else who buys Bitcoin and hodls, do, does not plan to sell it for five, 10 or ever. If they remove Bitcoin from the supply, the next investor has less Bitcoin available for their future buy. As a note, I am an investor in Bitcoin, an investor in MicroStrategy, but as an investor for Bitcoin, I have been accumulating Bitcoin for the last four years. And I have not sold one Satoshi and do not plan to sell one Satoshi anytime soon. So that means whatever I bought is no longer available for the next investor. That's all.